bio to life. So um, uh, this is a new ingredient that came from our innovation. And but first and foremost, I need to make a, a, a clarification and a, a mention of detail. This ingredient has been completely developed in Asia Pacific for the Asia Pacific market. So everything from ideation to development, to industrialization, even testing is done in Asia Pacific. And we believe that we, with this ingredient, we are going to close a specific gap that we have seen on the market thanks to uh, new development, but also that matches what the consumer is asking for today and also especially in the future. So um, we as BSF, uh, we are a company that is, uh, is on the market since age and uh, actually uh, more than 150 years and the innovation was always one of the key pillar of the strategy and the key success of the company. But we have to say one thing, there is someone in terms of innovation has a little bit more experience than us. And uh, it's very simple, it's nature. If something is nature, why nature? Well, nature is an ensemblement of organisms which are living together, same, sharing the same space, the same resources, interacting with each other and also competing with each other. And this makes possible that this interaction and competition pushes the organism to develop and to see what they are today. So every organism is pushed by the evolution to develop new skills, new behavior, new material that makes possible that that organism stay into that specific ecosystem, in that specific space. So our idea was pretty simple. Go back to nature and see if there is any material there that can work as, um, as a good ingredient for personal care, which is the segment we are working on. And why not even to see whether there are some material produced by some microorganism in this specific case, which is working into the microbiome, uh, cleansing system environment. This was the idea that, uh, that we had. And we know that nature of, is made of many ecosystems, like forests, oceans. But um, it's more and more known that there are micro ecosystems, so populated by, by microorganisms predominantly. And uh, it's not a secret also for consumers today that micro ecosystems are present everywhere. And skin and scalp is not an exception. So also skin and scalp are microecosystems, which are populated by different microorganisms, which are interacting with each other. And we all know that uh, ecosystems are uh, stable as long as they are balanced. And this happens also in our skin and scalp. So as long as the microecosystem on our skin and scalp are well balanced, we also have what we call the well-being. So there's no problem, everything is running well. The problem is where the microecosystem is getting unbalanced. That means that some microorganisms are overgrowing the others. And in that case, we can have some trouble. I'm talking about problems that we are trying to solve with cosmetics, which are pretty complex, like dandruff, acne, eczema, and all these kind of things. Well, this is um, how it is. The, the situation, but is the consumer aware of this? And I'm pretty sure you, all, you already heard about microbiome, microsystem, and so on and so on. But to validate this, we also ask our consumer insight team, which is a team we have here in Asia Pacific, which is uh, working and checking the social behavior, the social media communication, and so on. And I don't think I have been troubled to convince you uh, the late, one of the latest trends that we have seen is exactly micro wellness, micro, micro ecosystem balance and so on. Just to give you a few examples, in China we noted how the healthy hair, healthy scalp, terms about balance, scalp and so on are growing aggressively since years. And uh, they even rank as top second claim in China on the social media. All that area where we see where the microbiome is involved in terms of personal care. Well, we have oral care. We as consumers have been educated since we were kids, right? To care about our uh, mouth hygiene. Why? Because if we don't care about uh, the mouth hygiene at the end of the day, we are going to have some unbalance, 
some issue about microbials and uh, some microbials are overgrowing and giving some problems. So from the minor breath issues to cavities and even more complicated stuff. So the topic of microbalance in connection with well-being is has changed in the later recent years. So the well-being has got an evolution. Then if you turn a little bit the perspective and we go especially into cleansing system and see what's going to happen, what is going now and in the future. Well, uh, what we see in, uh, in Asia Pacific in terms of development is um, somehow pretty interesting. So today, I don't think it's a big surprise to hear you if they tell you that no silicon, no sulfate systems are getting into the mass market to the mass consumer into communication for the wide consumer base. Well, this is what it is today. About the, what do we expect about the future? Well, in Asia Pacific, we expect that the first step that we are going to see is uh, what we call no petroleum cleansing system. So what does this mean? Uh, it's very simple. Certain ingredients we have into, into personal care they are partially based on renewables and partially based on synthetics. And uh, especially everything has started in Japan, at least in Asia Pacific, the shift is moving to something which is all from renewables. Okay? And this is going to happen in the short term. Things are already initiated in Japan, in Korea, uh, in China, and we expect uh, to reach the wide mass in the coming future, in the coming months and years. In the medium to long term, what we expect is something, well, a little bit more drastic, and it goes into something we call genuinely natural cleansing system. What, what is that? Well, it is material that comes straight forward from the from nature. We expect it from nature. It can be plants, it can be fermentation, it can be something which is somehow untouched by human. And this is what we see for the future uh, where bio to life is coming in. So what is bio to life? We will see later about the details, but it's a product from fermentation. It's not another surfactant and it is nothing else, nothing more or less of what you need uh, on the skin. So first key point, how bio to life is produced by our cell? Well, we have to we have to say one little thing. Uh, the technology has been developed um, in the recent few years, and we collaborated with uh, some external partners. One is the um, it's a new, very famous university in Japan, also startup, which are located in Japan. The collaboration has also gone ahead with uh, with Indian partners and Chinese partners. Well, but the production itself, I want to specify here, is done with very simple means. So we are talking about vegetable oil as raw material. We're talking about canola oil, sugar, uh, protein hydrolysates. And uh, we go into a fermenter. And in this fermenter, we use a microbial, which is part of the yeast super family. And this uh, microbial is called Salmarella bombicola. You can Google and search about this microbial. Well, we do a fermentation. After the fermentation, we have a product that we wash and, uh, and clean just with physical methods. So we do not use bleach, we don't bleach, we don't use hydrogen peroxide. We simply clean with uh, washing and filtration and we get uh, the product we call BioLife. Just to give you an indication, the product looks like honey. Same color, same viscosity. We know how to improve the, the, the color and so on, but we don't want to use any chemical here, like solvents or, or bleaching, for example. Why this ingredient was so interesting for us? Well, first of all, as you will see later, this product shows some surface tension activity. Um, it is a cleansing system, but it, it is also, well, biodegradable, well biodegradable coming from nature. But most interestingly, it has a functionality which is targeting some microbials. So it has efficacy against bacteria or other micro uh, microbials like uh, Pseudomonas originals, or just to give you an example, or other bacteria involved into acne and so on. 
So, um, and just a little detail about this technology here, we'll see later. Uh, this technology has not been developed for personal care. This technology was used already into animal feeding into some major countries in Asia Pacific and for different purposes, but this tells you, you can get to a, a conclusion. This is a product which is uh, effective and also safe, being already approved for this application for animal feeding. What does it make it so special? Well, this ingredient is some functionalities that attracted our attention since the beginning. And uh, just to give you an, a glance, so it's natural and chemical reaction, we said, it is biodegradable, um, it is extremely mild, so it's a cleansing system which is uh, really mild, but remember there are some functionalities you will see later, and uh, it is so mild, it can be applied into classical personal care application like scalp care, like cleansing, face cleansing, hair cleansing, and uh, according to the data, they're so safe, we can also be using the oral care. And you know that oral hygiene is a very delicate segment because it's somehow in the mouth, it can be swallowed, and so on. So safety is absolutely a solid pillar there. The other thing, you know, for those who are staying into the personal care environment, making innovation in personal care environment is pretty tricky because of regulation. Well, this ingredient here has very good points uh, and compliances with regulation across the world that makes its usage very flexible and possible. Let's talk a little bit about the functionality and the mechanism of action, because this is where we've seen the, the most interest. Um, and um, what you see on this slide is what, it's a test, not done by, by BSF, it's done by our partner, university partner in, in Japan, is what we call microfluidic. So the little Y-shaped tube that you see into this pane is really, really small. We are talking about micrometers. The benefit of this technology is pretty simple. You can take this uh, rubber tube and you can grow the bacteria or the microbial you want. So the bacteria is on inoculated, it grows into this tube, it colonizes the surface, and then you see that it's a tube with a Y shape. Actually, it's based on two inlets, and those inlets you can flush whatever you want. On the right side, you see media, and you can circulate the, the growing media inside, which is the nutrient to my, the microbial, something that keeps the microbial alive and proliferate inside. On the, light, on the left side, you can flush whatever you want, the, the material you want to study. And in, into this specific test, we grew so, so the monoceroginosa, and we flushed on the left pane of this, of this slide, we flushed uh, bio to life at 0.1%. And we, do, we did a movie clip in the time lapse. Well, the interesting things that we have seen uh, with this time lapse and this flushing is that um, at a certain moment, the bio to life is able to remove very efficiently the biofilm that has been uh, done by pseudomonoceroginosa. So we compared immediately with um, a common ingredient in personal care, sodium lauryl sulfate, also called sodium lauryl sulfate, into uh, personal care jargon. Well, uh, sodium lauryl sulfate is a very strong, probably the most strong surfactant we can use in personal care. And the cleansing efficacy, oh, okay, it's some efficacy is there, but very, very limited if you compare to, to wildlife. And you can see from the green shaded pane in the middle, where we summarized how the biofilm is very efficiently removed by bio to life compared to solid lipid sulfate. So then we are in front of a, a, a unique mechanism, which is able to differentiate the approach or the, the cleansing system compared to the traditional method, which are based Generally, the traditional methods are based on very strong surfactant and some actives which are interacting or removing the, uh, the microbial itself. So it's something more efficient, we can say, uh, being also very mild and somehow peaceful. Why the biofilm removal is, is so important? Well, we have to talk a little bit about the growth of microbials, how, how it is and how it is seen today, especially at academic level. So for long time, the microbials, especially the microorganisms, were 
thought to be single cell, well, they are single cell living entities, but for many times, for many years, it was thought that there were not so much interaction between each other. Well, in reality, this is not the case because the microorganisms interact with each other, especially internally to their uh, species, also with other species. Of course, the interaction is pretty rudimental, but it's still much more than what, what it was thought till uh, a few years ago. So the life cycle of microbials, especially the single cells, um, it's divided into different phases, but just to simplify, uh, we can imagine how a microbial is arriving on a surface and try to colonize that surface, assuming that that place is good to grow, it starts to, okay, it lands, sees that that place is good to grow, and then it starts to duplicate very slowly. At the beginning phase, the duplication and the growth is very, very slow. Why? Because it's a matter of creating the condition for further growth. How this, uh, does this happen? Well, there is a, a specific form, um, a, a specific formation, which is the so-called the biofilm. What is the biofilm? Actually, it's nothing else than the, this microbial bacteria or even uh, evoluted microorganism. They produce this external matrix, the external network, some polymers, complex exopolysaccharides or also proteins, which are somehow helping the bacteria or the microbial to stick to the surface. So it's a good anchorage for the microbial to stick on the surface. Not only, so it's also a good point to protect the microbial cells from the external aggressor or for being taken away, for example. So it's a kind of protection in nursery at the same time. When the bio, biofilm is created and is well formed, then you have a phase that is actually the exponential growth. So when the colony is established, you have a very strong growth and very fast growth. Well. The traditional methods, what we, we said till today, are engaging with this system by using a very strong cleansing system, but the cleansing system actually is not so much able to remove the biofilm as we have seen in the previous slide where sodium lauryl sulfate, the strongest, the strong sodium lauryl sulfate is not even able to remove it completely. The other way to face this problem is to use sometimes biocytes, but the biocytes are kind of poison well, they are poison for the microbial. So they are able to, to kill the upper layers of the biofilm or at least of, of the colony, but they are not able to penetrate deep. And as soon as the biocide is gone, the microbials can start to proliferate again. So where, what is the benefit of, uh, of bio to life? You will see later the details of the composition, but there is one specific ingredient, which is according to the latest theory in academics and university, it is able to penetrate in the biofilm and delaminate the biofilm. So making the biofilm weaker, not as strong, not as stuck on the surface. So then the biofilm becomes easier to cleanse. So that's why when you combine bio to life with a surfactant or you have some surfactant inside with this specific component, well, you have a very easy way to remove the biofilm. So that's why we are entering in a different approach to the cleansing system. So let's go to the detail now. Why bio to life is so effective against the biofilm? Well, here comes the point. So um, we talk a lot about the mechanism of action, how we do it, we do it from fermentation, but from a technical point of view, what we produce, what is bio to life made of, is made of, of glycolipid. So technically glycolipid, more specifically sulfur. And um, when we do fermentation, um, the Stamorella bombicola is able to produce this glycolipid into two forms. We call it those two forms. One is called acid, for a very simple reason that there is an acidic group at the end, so this is chemical language. And this acid behaves exactly like a uh, cleansing agent. So this is the major point of Stamorella bombicola production. They're producing acid. But the technology developed by our Japanese partner in, the, um, uh, in BSF is to select a specific strain of Stalmarella bombicola, specific growing condition to make sure that our little microorganism produce high concentration of lactone. So that's why we call our ingredient lactone rich. 
what are the difference? So I was, as we said, acid is a cleansing system. But very interestingly, the lactone form, that we call so the ring, because it's somehow a closed molecule, it is not water soluble, and it is the boosting action against microbial and the biofilm. So this is the key factor that we have to select and to care during the production. So in our development, not only we care about the quality of the product itself, but also all the condition to make sure that we have enough lactone inside, enough ring inside of our production to have um, not only cleansing system, but also um, uh, a boosting efficacy against microbes. This is what we what we develop. So everything natural, it is functional as you will see later. And at the end of the day, is very exciting. This is what we recognize about this product. And let me allow me to give you a few details on on the functionalities. We did a lot of trials. You can also go on, on the web and Google it, and you will see that in academics or in the university, this is somehow getting more popular. So it's a really advanced technology from biotech. And uh, the application, if you remember the, the first slide when we make the introduction, one can be scalp or skin cleansing and one can be oral care. So in this slide, I just want to give you a few hints on how it works. For example, if you do some inhibition rate tests, we will see how bio to life at 1% it is able to reduce the growth of uh, Staphylococcus aureus. So Staphylococcus aureus is a um, naturally occurring bacteria on our skin. So there's nothing wrong in that. The problem is when there is overgrowth, which is growing too much, and it is present in some skin uh, issue like atopic dermatitis, eczema, or so on. So as we said at the beginning, so uh, an ecosystem, especially a micro ecosystem, has to be balanced to make sure that there are no problems. The problem is when one of these bacteria is overgrowing. And in that case, you need something which is able to block the growth of the overgrowing bacteria. So this is an in vitro test, something done in the lab. We did many other tests, but one very interesting test that we have done is on, on dendroff. And um, we did a test in Shanghai um, for this one. And we did a clinical test, so consumer test, by using uh, what uh, uh, no sulfate shampoo, and we wanted to target consumer with dandruff. We know that dandruff is a very complex problem. So it can be due to some internal system of the consumer, internal unbalance, but it can also be due to microbial overgrowth. It can be also uh, abuse of very harsh cleansing system. Uh, into shampoo. So that's why the sulfate-free can also help here. But we use the sulfate-free base. And uh, when we did our trial on um, uh, more than 120 consumers, we found a very interesting result. So first of all, if you add BioToLife to a sulfate, a no-sulfate shampoo, we see uh, an increase in an improvement more than 110% compared to the base. Very strong improvement. Not only we tried compared to pyroctone olamide, which is now a, a standard ingredient which is used to fight dendroff, for example. Well, in that case, we used, um, we compared bio to life with our pyroctone olamide, and we got even uh, an, extra, uh, an extra performance, almost 50% more. And we know that pyroctone olamide is a standard system that works very well, but it is still what I would call the old way to treat the trend, the dendrop. So it's something like using something that kills everything um, to make sure that um, the dendrop is gone. Not only, there was also another very interesting learning. When we combine BioToLife into um, a muscle fiction with uh, our ingredient LSW HP100, which is a biocide, we have an extra boost of um, performance. And this was a specific functionality that we realized being able bio to life to do. So we applied the patent, so the technology is now patented, and this combination will give us some more satisfaction, I'm sure, in the future. Last test, the last slide I'm going to show you about the performances is about oral care. We, we said that oral care is a, a personal care subsegment where 
microbiome or microbials are well known by consumers. So it's very easy to explain to the consumer. And uh, there are many papers, many scientific li literature showing how the lactone rich sulfurolipids, like our biotolite, for example, are able to give some boost, some, uh, some extra help to reduce um, the overgrowing, the overgrowth of uh, bad bacteria, for example, like Staphylococcus mutans or Oralis and Winnies and so on. So this was well known. We did our, our internal test on pooled human saliva and we found how the performance was what we saw really in the scientific literature. So um, to, re to reduce the growth or to block the growth of um, some uh, Streptococcus like uh, Vitis or Oralis, 0.1% active matter of vital life was enough. For Streptococcus mutans, you need a little bit more, but still in the range of uh, the dose of use. Still very interesting. So this tells how the, this ingredient is, yes, it's a cleansing system, but it's a multifunctional ingredient, which is able to work in the microbiome environment, uh, reduce the overgrowth overgrowth of certain uh, bacteria which are causing the issue and at the end of the day it's something that has been developed by Starmorella bombigola during its own evolution to make sure that the yeast itself is competing in, in its own environment so we get back at the beginning so this is a an ingredient developed by nature to make sure that this specific Starmorella bombigola is able to compete in the environment what we have done is simple even though simple is a bit reductive we we went to nature we see we saw what was available and we, we with biotechnology we produced this material by purifying and without using special chemical treatments so possible claims that can fit for this ingredient well we have many so we, have to, we talk about some functionality to enter the endro we talk about Mildness and cleansing is one of the key factors. Um, it can apply to scalp tonic, more freshness, facial cleanser, acne product, and so on and so on. So very good natural uh, natural product with multifunctional. And um, it's a way that we're trying to bring nature back into our urban life. So, as you have seen during the slides, that there is a QR code you can scan and uh, you will be redirected to a web page where you can fill it and you can ask for sample. And uh, of course, um, we have, for example, we didn't talk about certain applications. So we prepared some prototypes that we have here with us. Uh, we have a full bag of prototypes just to tell you how the product can be formulated, how it can be incorporated into some, uh, some cosmetic products. So we have, for example, facial cleansers for pump foam. And you can see, I hope you can see that, it's very, it's crystal clear, transparent, so you can formulate with surfactant. It's not that complicated, it's very, pretty simple. And um, so this is one example, um, a no-sulfate shampoo is actually the formulation we tried. Ah, okay, sorry. So you cannot see that. Okay, I'm sorry. So you can see uh, this is the formulation we use for uh, for the clinical test you've seen about anti-dendruff. We talk about oral care, right? right? So um, application can be like in mouthwash. And this the, the, the product itself not only cleans, not only emulsify and solubilize the flavor, but it also has this boosting effect on microbial. And you can see how, how the product itself is crystal clear. And why not? We also have a concentrated mouthwash, for example. In this case, it's purple. But you can put a drop into the water, you can mix it, it becomes a, a mouthwash with high tech inside. Or any application, for example, on the go, like a refresher, <laughs> taste of mint. Want to try? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so again, 
thank you very much for participating. If there are questions, please type. We are willing to, uh, to answer and remember, scan the QR code, place an order, make your trials, try the product, formulate it into personal care um, application, and let us know what you think about it. Thanks. Thank you, Francesco. And uh, thanks to everybody for joining in uh, for the session. I think we're now open for Q&A for um, the next few minutes. We do have some more time. Uh, and I think I forgot to introduce myself in the beginning, so maybe this is a good time. So my name is Bhavna, and I am uh, in charge of communications for uh, care, uh, chemicals here in Asia Pacific. So with that, I think we have the first question, uh, Francesco. This is coming in. Uh, it says, what was the biodegradability of the glycolipid tested? Yeah, very simple. Biodegradability is very good. Um, it's, a, it's an ingredient that has um, highly biodegradable profile. Mm -hmm. The next question is, do you have any study of using bio to life and toothpaste against plaque, bad breath and gum problems? So this is one of the target that we have in the coming weeks. We have been uh, a little bit slowed down because you know what's, uh, what's happening in the recent months. Uh, but we have a full test plan uh, that goes in oral care, it goes against acne and many other applications. Okay, uh, the next one is, uh, can bio to life be applied on leave on products? And yeah, and is it compatible with oil? Are there any side effects? Very good question. So. As you have understood, this is a technology which is at the beginning. Um, we did some trials. We applied, we put our um, our main trials on the most promising uh, fields that we have seen. So oral care, anti-dandruff, but uh, we also make some trials into Livon. Well, but in Livon, we did some emulsification power, power trials. So the product works as an emulsifier for the technical people in the call. You probably have noticed how the structure looked like and this structure is a kind of emulsifier so um, we tried it works in the emulsification are there benefits for skincare i'm pretty sure there are i cannot justify i cannot make the evidence right now but uh, again part of our test plan uh, for them for the coming weeks so stay tuned okay so is bio to life good for scalp care and is uh, can it eliminate bad odor in the hair and how is the efficacy? Yeah, okay. So this is uh, a point that has been highlighted by uh, some players on the market. Uh, whether it can eliminate the bad odor, I don't have to, but the bad odor is actually coming from the degradation of our sebum fats uh, done by microbials. So you can imagine a thing that somehow rebalance the microbials or try to compensate the overgrowing microbials on scalp, how it works. Again, I don't have trials and results now. Uh, everything is planned for the coming weeks. We have a full test plan in, across Asia. So some trials in Korea, we have some trials set in China, some in Indonesia for different application and for different positioning. Today, I don't have an answer. Uh, I'm pretty optimistic on that. Uh, the next question is, what is the inky name of Vitaline? Yeah, uh, so it's a fermentation. We do an extraction from a Salmonella bombicola, which is a yeast. So the inky is yeast ferment extract. Okay. Is uh, BioToLife probiotic? Well, actually, it's not probiotic. Uh, it probably goes into the class of postbiotic. That you have probably seen some big players from America or from Europe using the postbiotics. So all the metabolites which are produced by microbials and then applied into personal care. So as you have seen, we do a fermentation from a microbial, but then we make purification. So what we sell is the product. So then I would say there are different classification according to the country you go. I would say that according to the most, uh, the widest interpretation we are in the postbiotic. Okay. So I think we have time for two more questions. The next one is, can it be used in acne remedy applications or facial cleanser? Well, in facial cleanser, we did some uh, internal tests, works pretty well. Acne is part of, again, our uh, target testing. So you know that acne is generally, is remedy again acne, okay, it's a, also a very complex problem, but for the rinse off, you have salicylic acid, which is one of the more 
most used ingredient, and for the live on, you have benzoyl peroxide, which is extremely efficient. Our test plan is to work on the routine, so also the cleansing, but also on the live on. Okay, so the last question is how long will it take? Oh, okay, so we have one more, so I'll go to that. Um, is it safe for baby skin? Mm, it is safe for baby skin. Uh, according to our toxicity data, uh, the compatibility and the mildness is extremely high. So in general, I would say yes. So it depends on which specific application. As always, when you're talking about ingredients and baby, you have to be extremely careful. But the data profile of these ingredients are pretty good. Okay, so the next question, maybe the last one that we can take for today is how long will it take for us to get the samples? Okay, the samples have been uploaded into the system, so we are producing the small packs today. And at the end of the day, we should be ready to dispatch samples coming week or maybe in the next days. The reason why we, we took a little bit longer is very simple. Our fermentation production plan is in India, so you know that there was lockdown in the past weeks and everything is resuming back to normal now. So we are pre catching speed. Okay, I think um, some more questions since we have maybe two more minutes, we try quickly. Um, it asks about oral care. Um, what is the dosage and can it be used for applications in mouthwash and toothpaste? Yeah. Um, so in terms of toxicology, the maximum concentration allowed is 1% uh, AM active matter, according to what we have seen from the data, that equals 2% as is. Uh, in reality, according to our test, we, we saw that 0 0.1, 0 0.5% is a constant, is a dose of use that we would recommend. Okay, uh, is it able to kill specific microorganism on the skin? Mm, we have done trials on uh, different pseudomonas, streptococcus, uh, we have done on staphylococcus also. And then in our test plan, we have different bacteria, the good and bad ones, that we are going to want to test to see whether there are some selectivity. How about the finished product pH range and the dosage range? Well, the dosage, the dosage, dosage range is uh, what we, cons we recommend is maximum use 5% 5 5 uh, active matter that equals 10% as is. I think it can be used also lower than this. And the, other, the first part of the question was about... The pH range. The pH range. Yeah. Okay, so this is a key factor. In terms of application, I understand, right? Yeah, they say yeah, in yeah. the finished product. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so in the finished cosmetics. So yeah. this is a, a key question because, again, we have to talk a little bit technical, but this ingredient here has a higher solubility as long as the acid form is completely dissociated. So that means a pH above 6. In that case, you have the best performances. It can work also at lower, a lower pH, but you need to ask your formulators to tweak a little bit the formulation. It's not that complicated. One recommendation is avoid high pH, high temperature, because if you remember the key factor, the key functionality is the ring. And the ring itself is stable if the pH is not above a pH. So it can be break down. But in, in personal care application, high pH, okay, there are a few products. We will say some facial cleanser, the soap base, and also the other application, but I would say minor. It can be minor. So in general, it has a very flexible application. All right. Thank you, Francesco, for answering those questions. And thanks to everyone for sending in those questions and for being with us for the last 45 minutes. I think we close here. Okay. And uh, thanks again to everybody. If you still uh, are looking for samples, please use the QR code and place your uh, sample order, and we will send it over to you soon. And do stay tuned for more from us on BioToLife. Thank you Very so good. much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.